It's May 16th, 2015, Sequoia State Park. We're just unloading the dogs and trying to walk down this trail. It's a paved trail at the park for guests and visitors, locals. There's Sparky and Eddie all excited. The sun just came out. There's rain to the east, and we're in northeast Oklahoma. There's rain to the east, and rain in western Oklahoma coming this way. And this is the first time I've tried hiking or carrying a pack since Christmas Eve when I was in the beginnings of congestive heart failure and collapsed out here on a abandoned closed off road and game ranger had to come rescue me. My heart had gone out of rhythm. I ended up having more heart failure in January and was admitted to the heart hospital. January 19th, had heart surgery on January 20th. And then recovered all winter. You can hear the wind in the pine trees. Boy, that's a distinct sound. It always reminds me of Colorado. And hiking up there. That sound of the wind in the pines. It always reminds me of that Michael Murphy song too, Carolina in the Pines about Colorado. Eddie's pulling me big time here on his leash. I guess you want to just let him off the leash. Yeah, he won't do anything. Eddie's a coward. He's not going to run off. He wants to stay by his mom and daddy. He's like, he's boy, he's got a big smile. But after recovering from congestive heart failure over the winter, basically couldn't do much. Hear the Cardinals singing. There's uh, pine warblers out here in these trees, and in general, this is about as far west as you find pine warblers are in these pine stands here. Yeah, but they're, they're, not, they're not singing. You might hear one occasionally, but they've already stopped singing. They sing during breed, breeding season. They start early. I think they start in like February or March. You'll hear them out here singing. And they're, they're very small, little yellowish birds, and you cannot see them in those pines. Of course, these pines are very tall. I mean, my gosh, they're 50 plus feet high. You, I've, uh, I've heard them, uh, I've hiked and birded and done species identification out here for many years. Hiked hundreds, literally, well over 100 times out here, and I've, I don't even try to see them. I mean, I, occasionally I've been lucky and saw one. I bet I've seen five. Out of the hundreds of times now, I've heard them sing. They're little tiny birds sitting way up, you know, 50 foot sometimes or more in a pine tree. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to see them. But anyway, uh, finally, I, I did some follow-ups with a cardiologist, and on April 21st, or April 15th, I'm sorry, they did an echocardiogram. And on April 17th, I met with a cardiologist for follow-up, and basically said my heart was fine and back within normal range, which I did not expect. I thought they were going to implant a pacemaker through invasive surgery. I hate that phrase, invasive surgery. I think the wind's probably interfering. There's, there's the road. This trail runs along parallel to the main road that goes in from Sequoia State Park to uh, Western Hills Lodge. And they just built this a few years ago. I normally go way back in and hike in the woods, but the t first the ticks are out now. And then second, like I said, it's the first time I've walked out here. 
since Christmas Eve when I collapsed and the game ranger had to come and get me, which was rather embarrassing. But uh, I met with a cardiologist April 17th and they gave me the all clear and so my problem now is I've been deconditioned uh, by the heart failure and then your heart gets weak and then you just get out of shape basically so I'm slowly reconditioning and I'm doing much better. They're waiting on me up here. There's Eddie. He's looking. Where are you? What are you doing? Come on, let's go. He can't understand why we're not picking up the pace. And I'm carrying a pack, which a light day pack, just to try to start building up again. This is nice right here. They're kind of down in the forest. You can smell the pines and I don't know what it is or something that's falling out of the trees. It's a, I don't know which tree it is. It's flowered. I hear a titmouse back there. There's a lot of those. I, I did species surveys out here and identified birds for a number of years. And I came year round. I came when it was 100 degrees, came when it was snowing and well below freezing. Me and my uh, Sammy girl, my lab, who died, went put her sleep March 29th. She'd always go with me. And uh, I would do bird species surveys and uh, input them on ebird.org, which is uh, Cornell University Lab Ornithology. I hope that, that we've got a south breeze. There's Danny Woodpecker. I'm rusty on my warblers. I used to really study those sounds. That sounded like a yellow warbler, but I'm not going to swear to it anymore. I can recognize, still recognize some of the warblers. They have a very distinctive call, like the pine warbler or the prothonotary. But I think that was a yellow warbler. Maybe somebody's listening to this, they can ID it. It's a mild day, I don't know, it's in the 70s probably. But it's kind of strange to come out here and hike on a paved trail. Uh, I, I estimate I've hiked, not counting running or jogging or walking, I've hiked over 2,000 miles in my lifetime. And hiked literally hundreds of miles in uh, Colorado and the Rocky Mountains. I hiked, climbed, and backpacked the uh, Rocky Mountains solo, most of it by myself. Ninety, ninety, ninety-five 95% of the time I did it by myself. And out here most of the time is by myself, except I always took Sammy, my my beloved white lab that, I, like I said, and we had put her sleep March 29th. She was about 11 years old. I miss her out here. I never had to worry about her. She, if she'd run off chasing a rabbit or something, and but she could find me by uh, her the sense of smell, and she'd show back up. So when she was younger, she might disappear for 30, 45 minutes. I'd get kind of worried, and then I'd stop, you know. But she knew the routes I'd go and. I'd sit and take a break, and finally I'd see her. She was white. She, I'd see that flashes of white through the woods, like out there. And uh, I'd watch her, and she'd follow exactly where I'd been walking. She was just following. You could see her. She put that nose down the ground and just track me. So I never I, She was my best hiking buddy ever I'll ever have in my life. And uh, 
She could always find me. I didn't have to worry about her. That's why I miss her so much. Plus, she, uh, she didn't talk a lot hiking. I really liked that. <laughs> we just enjoy it. We each had our own experience out here. And there's Sparky. Boy, he's waiting on me. He said, what are you doing? Why are you walking so slow? And there's Eddie. And there's Linda. And to uh, Bill, Julie, Claire, and Luke, this is that trail you were talking about. It is a nice trail. I've never been on it. I always go back out in the woods this first time. I'm and it has some benches and things. And there's Sparky, Sparky Doodle, King of the Doodle Bugs. What are you doing, Sparky? What are you doing? Look in that camera. Oh, look, look, looky there. He said, let's go. What are we waiting on? What are we waiting on? There's Eddie Bear. Hey, come on. This is woodpecker heaven out here. Have down, the small ones are downy woodpeckers. And uh, there's hairy woodpeckers. I think they're here just in the winter. I can't remember. And you have red-bellied woodpeckers year-round. And then there's also uh, yellow-bellied sapsuckers. And then there's the larger fairly pretty big uh, red-headed woodpeckers and then there's the biggest uh, pileated woodpeckers they're big and uh, they have this wild call you can hear them away off it's, I always it, it sounds like a jungle bird yes. uh, we have them all there was actually a bigger one. I, their range, I don't believe, was, wasn't up here. The ivory-billed woodpecker, which you may have heard of, it's extinct because of the logging in the southeast United States. There's a sad story on that. They were huge. And there's another one down in Mexico that's, I think it's presumably extinct. That was as big that was related to it, and I can't think of the name of it. There, at one time, kind of the range went up into uh, across in the United South, South Southwest United States. I think it was Imperial Woodpecker. Now that I think about it, that's pretty good. Considering I had to take a pain pill even to come out here. I'm actually very thankful to be here. I had a near-death experience with my congestive heart failure on uh, January 21st. So I'm a recovering congestive heart failure from congestive heart failure. And I have degenerative disc disease in my neck. I have a bad right ACL, a bad right sciatic nerve, and a bad right wrist. So I don't know why I don't walk in circles. Everything messed up on the right hand side. I just heard I think a prothonotary warbler in the background. There goes a car by. We're going by the uh, or nearing the main entrance road. Like I say this runs parallel to it. It's mostly cloudy. We've had all that rain and more coming. We're under a flash flood watch today.
Lynn and the dogs have left me far behind. I told her when we started, let's just, just go at your pace, you know. It's the first time I've been back out. I've been doing some things, you know, trying to recondition, but I just don't know what I can do yet. There's the dogs. Boy, it sure sounds like one of those of the field sparrow out there. Uh, they sing early in the season. It is a field. This field out here, that's for horses. They have a stable here and you can ride horses and they have trails back in there. I think that's field sparrow. I don't remember him singing this late in the year. They're one of the first birds to start singing in the spring. It's already May 16th. Yeah, I'm getting some open areas. I think it's going to get more wind noise. So that's the way it is. It's Sequoia State Park, northeast Oklahoma, on the walking trail on May 16th, 2015.